Matteo Ricci lived from 1552 to 1610. Ricci was an Italian Jesuit that studied Portuguese and sailed with the Portuguese to India for four years, then lived in China from 1582 to his death in 1610. His missionary practice converted few. However, his writings gave a glimpse at the marvel of the Ming dynasty. The Ming replaced the Mongol barbarians. They started their own version of a Chinese Renaissance. The emperor ruled again with the mandate of heaven in the forbidden city of Beijing. As long as the kingdom was peaceful and prosperous, the Ming family could lead. They strengthened the civil service exams to create a competent and educated administration. There was also a social and foreign hierarchy. The emperor was at the top, followed by the eldest son. Each sibling respected the elder and the wife respected the husband. This is a drawing of the Forbidden City that is inside the capital of Beijing today. The emperor was cloistered here and did not associate with the average Chinese. Uh, some revered him not necessarily as a god, but as a divine ruler. They also treated foreigners with different levels of, I could say, apathy. Korea and Vietnam were generally mostly respected because they did adopt a number of Chinese cultures, whereas Japan did not adopt Chinese culture. They were considered inner barbarians. Europeans, if they would come and visit, they would also have to kowtow and send tribute to acknowledge the dominance of China. The Ming created stability. Again, as I said, it was more or less a Chinese renaissance or rebirth. They did have a series of canals. They refurbished them and lengthened them. Agricultural sword. And as you would have contact with the West, specifically the fact that the Spanish are bringing silver from the Americas to Manila, Philippines, and then trading with the Chinese for their silken porcelain. This allowed for a commercial rebirth of the Ming. Also, there were new food crops. From the Americas, potatoes were imported, and potatoes provide more calories per acre than any other agricultural product. The result, the population was about 120 million by Ricci's arrival in 1582, about 20 million more than in Mughal India. There was inflation due to the demand for silver, and it would be traded from what would be Mexico, part of the Spanish Empire, be sent to the Philippines. The Philippines would purchase Chinese products and then send that back to the Americas and also to Spain. However, over time, as the decline of silver into Manila would occur, there would be a contraction of the Ming economy. Their economy start to suffer with the decline of these silver exports. And by 1644, northern invaders from Manchuria drive the Ming from power. So Korea emulated a number of Chinese customs, so they were independent of China, but also uh, very close to them as far as their culture. They developed a, and strengthened a civil service exam, again, to create a bureaucracy. The Japanese were more independent. The period 1331 to 1568 was one of rebellion, civil war, and instability in Japan. To the almost constant contest for power among Japan's elites, was added the confusion and instability that accompanied the arrival of Europeans in Japan in the mid 16th century. This chaotic period was brought to an end by the unification of Japan by General Hideyoshi. Once the unification of Japan was complete, Hideyoshi would commit himself to the conquest of Korea and China. However, the effort failed but Korea was left even more dependent on China than it had been before, fearing a Japanese invasion. Hideyoshi's early death led to another power struggle. By the year 1603, Tokugawa Iyasu had defeated his rivals and established the Tokugawa Shogunate. Once in power, 
he focused on consolidating Japan's hard-won stability. The Tokugawa shogunate lasted until 1868. It sought to maintain stability partly by keeping the daimyo and their samurai under its control and partly by isolating Japan from the outside world. The Tokugawa years also brought significant changes to Japanese society, including the emergence of a new urban culture. 